The LG G4 is already one of the easiest TVs to recommend and one of the best this year. Today we will show you one use case where it really shines. LG G4 Gaming, up next. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian, this is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. The LG G4 was my early pick for TV of the year, and the more time I spend with the G4, the more I still believe that. Especially today, when I went in and gamed with it. LG has always had one of the best gaming um, options and features in the business for many, many years. And the G4 might be the best yet, with a new processor and 144 hertz gaming features flexibility of image and the brightest oled ever made without further ado the lg g4 in gaming thank you so much for watching all right guys let's do it lg g4 now before we get into the gaming i can tell you right now the g4 is an easy recommendation as i said earlier in the intro in my opinion, it's the best OLED that LG has ever released. That includes the amazing Z series, which has been my favorite TVs for the last number of years. As we look at the PS5 and the NVIDIA 4090 GPU. Now, a lot of talk for the G4 has been about its brightness, and I'll discuss it throughout this video as it is evident in many, many shots in both SDR and HDR. The specular highlights are absolutely stunning and blinding in some cases, especially later on when we show certain games. However, it's the processing. LG has always had a very good processing, but what sets apart the G4 than anything else is the Alpha 11 processor. It's really the detail. It's the fine detail mixed with the micro contrast as well as the high peak brightness of uh, the G4 that makes it so stunning. Not just in movies, streaming, sports, but in gaming. Now we're shooting this at Value Electronics. Special thanks to Value Electronics for supplying the G4. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all their information. Let them know that Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy sent you. Now we're checking out the PS5, showing you some of the settings, the game optimizer. Now it's one of the best in the business along with Samsung. There are several changes. I love the presets. I love the user preset. Now many will say the presets really don't matter. I couldn't disagree more. You're able to customize each one. They have a set preset, then you can tweak each one. The black stabilizer, uh, the dark room mode, the ability to change the darker parts of the scene while allowing the brighter parts of the scene to stay that way means the world in terms of flexibility. You can see tuned dark areas of the screen, therefore the specular highlights remain. But in this day and age with raised blacks on HDR games, not the TV, but some of the game's implementation, you can easily alter that yourself with LG. Not every manufacturer has that. I really miss that with my Sony A80L. But you're able to tweak until your heart is content Again, the G4 is very bright. That headroom allows you even more flexibility with the black stabilizer and being able to alter those areas of the screen. I like things to be more contrasty than even a director's intent. You can do that here. Dynamic tone mapping is excellent on LG's displays, as well as having HGIG is what sets it apart, is having great dynamic tone mapping, HGIG, Dolby Vision Gaming, as well as this new professional tone mapping that you can control the tone yourself. You can customize the curve if things clip, depending on the nits of the content you're watching. That's something I think a lot of you will use. That is new for this year. Now this is on all of their models, including the QNE days. 
Now you'll hear me stress flexibility of image in every single TV video that I do. What I mean by that is the ability to change the image. As we look at the expression enhancer, so many different ways and typically in any manufacturer, the gaming portion is left to, hey, hopefully you like the game mode. Not so with LG. Much like Samsung, there is that flexibility of image. However, this year, the G4 is a part. As an OLED, it is the easiest recommendation this year. New processor, MLA on all sizes. Stand with the 55 and 65 included, and it's a premium stand. I should have shown it in this video. But that flexibility of image in game mode is something LG has always had, and even more so now. I'll go back and revisit the motion settings in another video. Do not have time to uh, really play with those. Some of you, that's really important to you. Looking at Street Fighter, very colorful, very deep. Motion is perfect. But again, it's the depth, it's the processing. Now, the AI upscaler processing like that is definitely more impactful in movies. However, you do have a new processor affecting gameplay as well. The visuals are absolutely stunning. Now I'm in the room with the Samsung QN900D Neo uh, QLED Mini LED. I gamed in native 8K, which was absolutely amazing. Then I went to the G4 and I didn't lose anything in terms of detail. Obviously the resolution on the 8K is amazing, but going back to a G4 was not a drop. Also, the S95D at 77 inches is to my right, and the G4 still stands apart. It's something when you walk into a store like Value Electronics, where the best TVs in the world are, including the Z series, the G4 is still obvious. You can still tell it apart from everything else, even though it looks different than the, or it looks the same as the G3, body-wise in some ways, you can tell it's a G4. It's brighter, it's more detailed, it's crisp as can be. I can also tell you this is my next TV, where last year's TV purchase for me, the A80L, wasn't made until the end of the year. Here I am in the beginning of the year telling you that there is nothing that can compete with the G4 for the reasons that I listed, meaning in OLEDs this year, the QD OLEDs have the same processor as last year, it's tweaked but not to compete with a brand new processor. Samsung's QN900D has their main new processor on that one model. If that was on the QD OLEDs from Samsung, it would be uh, something I would compare it to. Also, I'm in the heavyweight division, meaning 83 inches, and there is nothing that can touch it at this size. Even my A80L with XR Clear, pushed it past everything last year because it had that processor. Now LG's new Alpha 11 matches that processor, perhaps even surpasses it. We'll see how it goes throughout the year. But having that mixed with MLA um, cuts through everything. Now, if the 83 inch just had MLA or um, the G4 just had MLA, it would have been a dud without the new processor, without the new features that come with it. Dolby Vision Gaming, Dolby Vision Filmmaker Mode, HGIG, the Director's Mode. These are things I've covered in other G4 videos. And guys, I will also film each size that becomes available. This is the fifth uh, G4 I have seen. I've spent time with the 83 at CES. I spent a lot, a lot of time at LG headquarters, and I've seen several of these at Value Electronics. This one was right out of the box as you saw me pull the, uh, the plastic off. No break-in period, no updates uh, were there. And it's absolutely stunning. Again, seeing the other best TVs in the world this year, the 900D and the S95D, I really wanted the G4. And as somebody that reviews TVs every year, it's hard to find something that you're like, I need that, I have to have that. I definitely need this and have to have it. Now with these games, I'll talk about this more in the PC portion. I then returned home to my 83 inch C1, which I love and can definitely see a difference in detail in brightness, HDR impact, and processing. It was evident to me.
LG really needed a win this year with the G4 and they accomplished that. The competition is off the charts with QD OLED and LG really knocked it out of the park with its processing and again, uh, MLA at the larger size. Looking at PC now, we're going to go into the game optimizer, enable the 144 hertz boost, then go into the control panel, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD on PC, and enable it there. Change your resolution. It's under PC. It's not a custom resolution. It is there. You click it. No problems. It is very smooth. Now looking at Horizon Forbidden West, not the PS5 version, but the PC version. It is night and day. Detail, color, FPS isn't just about frame rate. It's not just about speed. It's about fluid animation. PC allows that. And a lot of the others, we have ray tracing, which I'll show you later. Um, with DLSS and FSR, you're able to achieve 144 on a lot of new titles as well. My purchase of this TV will be primarily for PC gaming. Awesome console gaming. A lot of you guys asked about the flickering of VRR, the dreaded flickering. I've only really noticed that on older LGs or even Sony or any manufacturer in menus. I didn't notice it at all here. VRR is disabled in the game optimizer, just in the menu, but I do have G-Sync enabled. Not sure why it's not showing it in the optimizer. Didn't have any flicker during gameplay and didn't notice any during menus. But I'll follow up checking out my C4. Moving into Doom. Now I can show you Doom Eternal, which I'll show you in the 900D 8K video. I just prefer the aesthetics of Doom 2016 by a mile. To me, it's a better looking game, more realistic looking, less cartoony. Now, is 144 hertz important? I heard a lot of people say it's not a big difference. I've said that in the past. I wouldn't buy it for that reason alone. If this didn't have MLA or a new processor, I would not make the purchase. If you have a G3, I wouldn't make the purchase either unless you're moving up in size. However, if you spend the kind of money that I have spent and many of you have spent, look at the freaking specular highlights on that gun. Blinding. You're spending that money on a GPU, a CPU, and a rig. You're talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars. We optimize those settings to try and get every frame possible. If you can get an extra 20 plus frames, we will do it. And to me, it is worth it. And whether it's placebo or processing, it is felt. And unless you can experience it yourself, you really can't speak on it if it's placebo or not especially in a large OLED versus a small monitor. Now I mentioned the specular highlights. Doom 2016 is not an HDR title, but the muzzle flash, the bullets flying by, the explosions, the torches, that's where the peak brightness really jumps in. Now here we are looking at Hellblade Sonoa Sacrifice. This is about ray tracing. Very hard game to run, yet we're here at 144 uh, frames per second on PC. Gorgeous game. I can't wait for the sequel, but about the ray tracing is what made this game so hard to run on such a powerful machine. Again, we're running an NVIDIA 4090 Supreme. But we're talking about resolution. You're talking about frame rate. You're talking about clarity. And the G4 is the best I have seen. I don't say that lightly as the 8K Z series has been my favorite TVs throughout the year since the Z9, ZX, and the Z2. I feel the G4 surpasses them. While only being 4K. As I mentioned, I will cover every size that is available. I will go back and do the 55 inch. I will show you the 77 inch and the 83. Hopefully I'll show you the 83 in my own home. Same with the C4, which I am very pleased with. Love the C4. Even the small one without the pixel boost. I can't wait to show you guys the larger sizes. Going into a game like Days Gone, the reason why I like showing these games is they're available both on PS5, which it is a uh, PlayStation title. Seeing the PC version, absolutely amazing. 
As you saw earlier in the Ghost of Shishima from uh, PS5, the flames, the specular highlights. Now keep in mind that I'm also filming this in a room with light around me. The coating on the G4 is excellent. Reflection handling is actually quite good for a glossy panel. There are some lights behind me, the lights above me, yet it still looks like the G4 is floating. The bezel is nearly invisible, so if you're worried about a silver bezel, which I don't like on the G series, I barely notice it at all, especially in these light conditions, it looks black. I wish you were at the store with me. I wish you could walk around because it is as you walk through the environment and you look over your shoulder, you can really, it's like a kid looking back at their bicycle. You're like, wow, that looks amazing. Running into Resident Evil 4 Remake, 144 frames per second, maxed. Now we're filming this at 4K 60. And it still doesn't do it justice. I could turn the lights all the way off. I am in the store after hours. I just got done finishing the 900D. I was there for about 11 hours filming these. As I mentioned, I'll return to the C4 and even the B4 this year, as well as LG's QNED lineup. The reflection you saw behind me, that basketball game, that was actually the 86. I simply ran out of time between the Samsung and the LG. Now, gaming is my main use case. In terms of gaming, it easily beats last year's A95L. It is brighter. The G3 was as bright as the A95L. But XR Clear also pushed the A95L past LG, in my opinion, last year. And being a QD OLED, I do feel the G4 is a step beyond that. And if you game, it's a no-brainer. The only thing that can compete with the G4 in terms of gaming is Samsung's S90D and S95D. S95D has a matte screen this year. You're either going to love it or you are not going to love it. Also does not have a new processor. It has a tweak processor from last year. Still has the One Connect box. And I do feel the S90, though they are very close, it is a step down from the S95, leaving nothing to really compete with the G4, if you're a gamer. That is just my opinion. To the point where if we had a QD OLED at 83 this year, I would still purchase the G4 over it. I feel the processor is that good. I wish I could show you movies. It is a huge difference. And the AI upscaler can be toggled off in movies anyway checking out dead space one of my favorite games of all time the remake is absolutely stunning in this game the specular highlights the fire the lights all around the ship the lights on his helmet and his armor had me wincing at times had me looking away so each spark that hit was white hot it brought the ship to life, to the point where I went back to my C1 and that pop just wasn't there. Now the C1 is amazing. If you have um, a C1 or even an OLED of that time, I do feel upgrading to the G4 is something you will notice. Again, specular highlights, brightness and processing. Those lights on the stairs, the reflections, then you add in ray tracing plus those lights. The brightness is evident and it is something you can feel. Those lights shining above me really added to the immersion. We talk about extra brightness in anything. If it's not useful and it washes out the image, it means nothing. Now I chose uh, Forza Horizon 4 simply because I prefer this game over 5. Wait to see this game in 8K on the Samsung. Looks amazing on the G4. The reflections, the detail, as well as the instant pixel response of an OLED. 
very hard to beat. There is no compromise in regards to turning off a lot of the features with OLEDs. Mix in the game optimizer where you can change the black stabilizer. You can keep things from clipping. Having HGIG, having Dolby Vision Gaming, which Dolby Vision Gaming doesn't mean much to me, but for many of you, it means a lot. In movies and in streaming, Dolby Vision Filmmaker Mode is a big deal, and they have the best Dolby Vision implementation in the business. I could have sat here all day. The reflections, again, HDR impact. As far as SDR, did I notice anything being dimmer? I didn't actually notice any of that. Then again, the majority of the titles that I'm showing you are in HDR. Also PC, you have the ability to use the RTX HDR or Windows Always On HDR. So if you do feel SDR games are not bright enough, you can use those features to even give you back the brightness if it was not uh, bright enough. Most modern games do have HDR. I didn't find it to be a huge detriment even last year. I don't find it to be a problem at all here. Now mentioning moving into older titles, here we are looking at Gears 4. Gears 5 is a better looking game, but I love this scene. I've tested TVs and benchmark TVs with this scene for many, many years. Now on console, it's HDR, PC, it is not, but I'll take 4K 144 any day of the week. But it's the detail, it's the armor, it's the water on the floor. It's the material, you can see the water dripping down the wall. These are the things I love about uh, games that are campaign based. It's the immersion. Nothing pulls you out. There's no blooming or anything like that with an OLED. The motion is exquisite. But the lens flare, the muzzle flash, everything coming off the weapon, blinding. Even the bullets and uh, the tracing flying over my head had me almost like ducking. It sounds ridiculous, but I literally was, you know, kind of closing my eyes a little bit as they were so bright. Now I'm going to have LG's Greg Lee back on the channel to discuss MLA in more detail. It's not about just pushing whites. There is color over the top of that. It's very colorful. It's not just everything white is whiter. Going back to Modern Warfare, one of the greatest games ever made. Infinity Ward, as you know, responsible for Respawn. Going back to this remaster, as a PC gamer, my favorite part about PC gaming is not modern titles. It's going back to the games you love and rocking the highest frame rates possible, maxed out. I want to be able to bring this game to you and show you quickly how cinematic playing this game on an 83 inch TV would be. Considering the last time you probably paid Modern Warfare might have been on your first HD TV at 32 inches. Very passionate about gaming, obviously, but more so from a cinematic standpoint, not just multiplayer. I love multiplayer. But getting lost in a game, revisiting a game, reminds me so much of seeing your favorite movie and going to your favorite scene. Now, as I mentioned, for my own personal purchase, this TV would be in my home, in my home theater. That's the highest grade I can give it. Is this a full review? I don't do full reviews simply because the TV's changed throughout the year. But I can tell you the time I've spent with the G4, for me, must buy, no hesitation. Finishing up one of the greatest games of all time, Bioshock. Again, 144 hertz, 4K. You'll also see these in 8K. But towards the end of this video, I leave these videos long, guys. I'm not gonna apologize for that anymore. You can fast forward and rewind. I leave them long as our community watches these premieres live. When I do any video, they premiere.
meaning everyone watches them together. For all of those watching from our community, I love you guys. I appreciate everything you do uh, for me and my family, and you are truly enriching my life. If you're watching me for the first time, please consider liking and subscribing and joining our community and family. We would love to have you. What are your thoughts on the LG G4? I've made some bold claims in this video. Doesn't really matter. This is what I feel. Not what I think, but what I feel this year. I love all the manufacturers. Top to bottom, they're all competing at the highest level. Happy to see LG really pull ahead so far this year. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Take care.